The Noah Heights can observe the mitzvah of Onik Shabbat. Uh, no, uh, the, uh, there is two, uh, observance of Shabbat is only for the Jews. It is not for Noahites. It's not for non-Jews. The Rambam says that a, uh, and the Gemara says, that a Noahide, a Gentile, that observes Shabbat, gets themselves, instead of a mitzvah, they get themselves a heavenly death penalty. It's because it's considered stealing. And one of the uh, uh, seven Noahide laws is the prohibition of stealing. And the punishment for, a, for stealing for a Noahide is death penalty. So a Noahide is not allowed to observe Shabbat. And part of observing Shabbat is not to drive, not to light fire, not to write, not to build, not to destroy, but also to have Onig Shabbat, the special pleasure of Shabbat. So this is not something that is for Gentiles, this is for Jews. It's not for Gentiles. Now if a Gentile wants to simply hang out, relax at his house, have a barbecue, uh, I don't know, read a book, have a special meal on Shabbat, by all means. But they should not observe Shabbat mitzvot like it is Shabbat because they're forbidden from doing it. Unless they're doing it for practice purposes because they're, on, they're, on a, uh, they're in the process of converting to Judaism. But if they're not planning on converting, they're not in the process of converting, they're not allowed to observe Shabbat. And anyone that told you that they're allowed is simply wrong. Next question. How can a Noahide woman purify herself after a state of Nida? A Noahide woman does not have a state of Nida. Nida is only applicable to Jewish women. Now, of course, all women, whether they're Jews or Gentiles, have the, uh, the menstrual cycle. Uh, while they're still at that uh, age uh, age group uh, until it stops at some point, but they, uh, when they get older. But as far as the state of Nida, the state of Nida is a spiritual state. It has nothing to do with bleeding. It has nothing to do with the physiology of the, of the body. It's a, it's a spiritual state that comes from the bleeding, but it only happens and it's only applicable to Jews. It's not applicable to non-Jews. Non-Jews have no state of Nida, and in fact, a non-Jewish woman is allowed to be with her husband whenever she wants, even when she's having her period. There's no violation. There's no uh, uh, problem with it whatsoever. There's no state of impurity uh, for the non-Jew like there is for the Jew in regards to Nida. The impurity of non-Jews is something completely different, not relevant, and has nothing to do with Nida. Uh, it's, a, it's something that a person needs to know because, again, there are many people out there that are learning Shurim, whether it's for me or Rav Mizrahi or many, many other rabbis online. And without realizing it, or maybe they are realizing it, they're living Jewish lives, uh, but without any intention, plan, or, 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 or to convert. And before they uh, know it, they start feeling like they already are Jewish and they start doing things that are, in essence, wrong. Uh, wrong halachically, wrong uh, in, in other aspects. And there's simply no need to do that. And again, nobody needs to be offended because this is the Torah that we're talking about. It's not my opinion. Uh, so if it was my opinion, then a person has the right to be offended. If it's, if it's a Torah, then it's God's opinion. And God's opinion is not something we should be offended by because He's the one that makes the rules. Therefore, He's the one that is allowed to tell you uh, to decide what they are. Now, Kadosh Baruch Hu did not give the Gentiles a state of Nida. There is no state of Nida. The menstrual cycle has something to do with, with pregnancy and so on. It has nothing to do with, with, the, uh, with the state of Nida. So a woman that's a Gentile, that is a, uh, 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 has a menstrual cycle, she uh, can even be with her husband during that time if she pleases to, if she finds it disgusting or her husband finds it disgusting or whatever the case is. Obviously, they don't have to be together. But as far as to, uh, to observe family purity like the Jews do, Certainly she should not do it. She should not do it because it's stealing a mitzvah, no different than people that are, like I said about stealing Shabbat. Uh, now, if she chooses not to be with her husband uh, during the time that she has her period, no problem. But if she decides that she wants to act like she's Jewish and start observing the family purity, waiting several days uh, to, uh, to stop bleeding, then waiting more days to, uh, to have the clean days, and then go to some body of water, or chas go to an actual mikveh and dip there, this is a very serious problem. 
So the point being is, is that a person needs to know where they stand and they need to act accordingly. Why? Because when you do, that's you serving your purpose, that's you serving your Creator. When a person starts doing things that they're not allowed to do and they're not supposed to do, although those things are righteous acts, they're not righteous acts for you. They're not righteous acts for you. So for example, if let's say for example, I decided to take some money and give it to somebody. Okay, give it to some poor person. Okay, that would be a great thing. People would say, oh wow, look, he's giving tzedakah. That's so nice. That's so righteous. That's so generous. And all the wonderful compliments. But if they found out that when I was taking that money, I was taking it from somebody else's bank account. I was taking it from somebody else's safe and giving it to other people as tzedakah, then obviously that's not tzedakah, that's stealing. So that's in essence the person, what a person needs to understand is that although the mitzvah of family purity is a mitzvah and a good deed for a Jew, it's not for a non-Jew. No one is telling you to be promiscuous, chas v'shalom, to be immodest, to, to do things that uh, you shouldn't do or do the things that you don't want to do. But again, a person needs to know where they stand and what they need to do in order to serve their Creator. If they're a Jew, they need to serve Hashem like a Jew. If they're not a Jew, they need to serve Hashem like a righteous non-Jew. And a righteous non-Jew has plenty of work to do already that they don't have to add any more mitzvot to themselves. Because if a person knew that in order to be a righteous Jew, they have to perfect their character traits, they have to overcome their anger, they have to overcome their arrogance, they have to overcome their stinginess. They have to overcome their carelessness. They have to overcome all of the obnoxious things that are about them. They have to overcome them. They realize they already have a whole lot of work uh, uh, cut out for them. There's no need for them to add any more. They don't need to add any more. Now, if they want to do these mitzvot of family purity and Shabbat and kosher and everything else, then they simply need to convert. That's it. And, and don't live a double life. They need to convert. Now, of course, you can't just convert just because you want to. You have to, you have to go through a process. But nonetheless, if a person is through the process, then they'll have guidance from the rabbi of what to do, what not to do, when to do it, when not to do it.